Today's guest is former NBA player Alan Bannister. Alan Bannister, I want you to, to welcome you to Abrasive Basketball, coach on the couch. And um, Thanks, Lee. We're, we're, we're in lockdown and I know our signal's a bit dodgy. I think it's the Welsh weather, but it's okay. We'll, we'll deal with it. I, I always talk about you in the club and talk to the guys about your journey in basketball. Do you, do you want to talk a little bit about how you started in the game and what you've done in the game of basketball? Uh, when, when I started off from a young age? Yeah. Yeah, I, I started playing um, in high school when I was in year seven, so I did 12. And I had an American, uh, well, my PE teacher, uh, proactive basketball. And then we, we had an American coach come in uh, Martin, who are coaching today, uh, and he, uh, he taught um, taught us a few years, and, and uh, quite a few of us went to his basketball sessions. It all started from there, really, and then I moved on at uh, age 15 to Warrington, which is Manchester, uh, one of the Manchester teams. It later became Manchester United for a little while, but it called Warrington by the Viking, coached by Joe Hubbard. Uh, I played there um, till I was 17, and then when I was 17, I played for the Manchester United men's team um, with uh, Colin Irish, Will Brown, Ed Owner, David Lloyd, Phil Brazil, and so they was in the European European Cup, uh, I think it was called Horak Cup, 17. Uh, they won the league before, so we were playing Europe as well at 70, so that was really good. And, um, I started playing for England, uh, the under-18, 17, and uh, also played for the under-19s team, I was 17 as well. It all started from there, really. Then uh, I, uh, some American college uh, whilst I was playing uh, in a competition, and I got a scholarship to go to Oklahoma State um, in America. And that was uh, 1985, 1986, a few years ago, I yeah, think. That was, uh, yeah. That's about right. Yeah, so I went to, I went to, I went to university at uh, Oklahoma State and uh, ended up transferring to go to school at Arkansas State University. Uh, so that, that's about the right time. Yeah, so after that, um, I went to um, after college, I went to the A trials, went to trial and then the pre camp in Chicago um, I tried out with the Angeles Clubs first then I went to the Boston Celtics and I got invited up to Utah um, for the summer and I ended up signing a, a one contract with the Utah Jazz uh, unfortunately things didn't work for me with the Utah Jazz I had a knee injury um, which I had a surgery on in America, and then I had another surgery on it. I came back to uh, Europe, where I played for Chester Jets for uh, two years. Then I played for Newcastle, the Newcastle um, They were originally called that. It would be 1996. And then I worked in the, I think it was 97, Bosnian ruling, where... English players could go abroad, but they didn't count as a foreign player. I went to Greece uh, for a team in Greece for a little while. Um, I came back, played for a team in Austria for a little while. I came back, played a few games back in England. Uh, and I, I think I've got a third one. Um, I, I just had too many injuries. I couldn't carry playing for from, from a playing career. I always thought basketball from the age I was 21, started cutting basketball. And then I did a fish, uh, took a job in Wales as a development officer in, uh, in Anglesey, uh, where I was in Anglesey, in Gwynedd County, where I coached basketball. Um, I think that's where I met yourself. Yes. And then, yeah, and then I got involved in Wales. Uh, I used to go to the, the competitions in Cardiff and Ronda. Um, I met Will, Will Jones, obviously, I knew yourself, and then uh, got him basketball. 
and coach the uh, sorry coach the 16s and the under 18s team in 2003 and 2005 what um the 2003 competition was in andorra 2005 it was Euro Europa Cup that was in Aberdeen, uh, and then since then I, I moved back to England, where I'm still coaching basketball on a local level um, in Bolton. Moment. So that's where I'm at now. What some of the people watching probably don't realise, um, and you've succeeded in the sport of basketball, but also what helps you is you are over seven feet tall isn't it yeah yeah so i um i thought I was foot four but most me as i never seven foot four and foot five. so my height was beneficial to me um i used to play cricket before i played basketball so i love cricket as well i was a bowler uh at cricket and a bit of a slogger and then once I started playing basketball, that was it for me, really. I wanted to do, and I wouldn't say I was the uh, most player from a young age. Um, my coach, uh, well, the England coach at the time, Bill Beswick, said I actually looked like a puppet. Which was when I first started playing, so I started my coordination and um, uh, a lot of running, a lot of forming, just a lot of movement, zigzag, uh, and lateral movement drills as well. And, and uh, I was one of these people that was determined, and that, that's just how I got, well, that was my work ethic, that's how I got better every day. From a junior, I went for my first England trial when I was 15, and I went to Birmingham, and, you know, I needed to improve dramatically, um, but I didn't make the team. But then the next year, when I was 16, um, I got picked again for the under-17s team, but the England coach, Another England coach actually invited me to play for the under 19s team, so I got picked. So, in a year, I put my mind to it that I was going to train my fitness, my coordination, all my skills. I put myself, uh, I, w I went to a lot of different training camps, went to, um, used to train every day, and, and I was determined that I was going to make it. Now, one of the uh, documentaries that has been released lately was The Last Dance, Michael Jordan's documentary. Who, when you were um, in the United States, go into these NBA camps, who were some of the most famous people that you met? Um, as far as uh, the more famous people I met, I met quite a few uh, basketball players that people... And no, but actually going to the camps, one person um, took me aside and started um, when I was in the Chicago pre draft camp. Coach Jackson, uh, Phil Jackson's coach, uh, did a train, a 10 minute training, uh, me through my paces for 10 or 15 minutes as a coach and as a player. That was, you know, great to me. I uh, have a respect. Um, and, and it was just great that he took the time out to actually. Uh, uh, do some drills. Um, Matt Johnson, uh, Magic Johnson's, uh, you know, from from a different team. Um, I'm, uh, we played against the Lakers when I was injured, but um, I was just get, trying to get back into shape again, and uh, I ended up feeding him the basketball for 15 minutes while he was doing his warm up. <laughs> wow! So I was passing him the ball while I was doing all. <laughs> so that 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 was pretty cool. Uh, from a young guy, I just used to see these guys on TV growing up, and you uh, awesome. And then when you're actually there in person and you're passing them the ball, you know, while he does his training routine, it's just it's real, really. Uh, likewise, uh, uh, Sean Kemp, um, I, I was in the same um, basketball um, summer league as Sean Kemp. I got to know Sean Kemp. He's a good. Um, Obviously, Carl Malone, John Stockton, who are my teammates. And then um, when I was 17, we, we, um, when I first went to America, uh, I went watching the Houston Rockets play um, the Chicago Bulls. And, uh, and afterwards, uh, we got introduced to all the players uh, from the Bulls and the Rocket team. Whether or not they remember me or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, Al, I mean, we've been friends for a long time and, and we've always kept in touch. 
Um, a lot of children on, and a lot of players now growing up and through the game, there's a lot of bullying that goes on. Did you encounter any of that when you first started? From, uh, bullying in, in regards to other pl- other teammates? Or? Yeah, teammates or in school did, because you were obviously, you know, really tall for your age. Did, did you come across or, or or were people sort of a bit scared of you because, you, you know, you were the bigger... Oh, no, I, I, I think... Um... I, I think when I was younger, you know, well, even now today, you're always going to get negative comment. And, uh, yeah, I, not not in basketball terms, um, but, you know, going to school, growing up, I enjoy going to school, I enjoy PE, uh, going to school, everything like that. But you are going to come across people that, you know, say derogative uh, remarks and things like that. But, but I used to... Uh, Anything that was negative that was said to me, I used to use it in a positive way. I used to always be the person that I would I would say, well, you know, I'll show you or um, watch this space thing. So um, I, I can only say for, for anybody who ever said a negative comment to me, it just inspired me even more to, to go on and, and do well in the sport. Um, I remember my dad, you know, I'd be running up and down outside the house at night. I'd be uh, skipping for 25 minutes. So um, I, I just used anything negative and focused on the positive, really, with basketball. Um, even when uh, I had tough times in America in college before, when I hurt, hurt my, my, I really hurt my knee and my foot, um, I used to just, just um, if ever I felt anything negative, what I used to think to myself, you need to go and train. You need to go and do some press ups. You need to go in the gym. You need to go for a run. You need to go and get a skipping rope, skip rope for twenty minutes, and anything you do that's um, anything like that is just positive and 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 reinforces your thinking that you're going to do well in basketball. That's, that's things. The more I trained, I thought to myself, you know, things will work out. I think that's really good advice for young people: is turning that negative into a positive. Because oh, you got to. Th- there are a lot of people, you know, who will try and put you down, put you down. But if you can turn that just like you did and look what it takes you, you've been all around the world with the game. Well, not a lot of people because they don't really talk about it. But when I was 17 on my 17th birthday, I had a benign tumor operation on the tour gland. Uh, so you put your church glands, uh, if you put your finger towards your temple, in the middle of your head, that's kind of like where it uh, intersects. Um, I, I didn't know what the outcome of that would be, really. Um, I was even the doctors were unsure at the time, you know, how such to be. But I came out of that when I was 17 years of age, and I was just determined. Um, I had to have radiotherapy afterwards, and I was just determined that I was going to get myself back into shape. I'm going to play well, and and I used to just jog down at first i couldn't run but i used to walk down to the basketball park which was about a mile away from my house in a cage and i just used to shoot shoot every day free throws off the basket till the doctor let me run again and then i went down there i used to spend three or four hours down there every single day for the whole summer after surgery and then at the end of the summer i got the all clear where i could uh, join back into basketball um and I think that's the biggest adversity in my life was, was the uncertainty of what was going to happen after the surgery or during the surgery for that. So once uh, once I'd overcome that, I was just so determined to be be the best basketball player I could be, and uh, I never, you know, uh, I'm grateful for what, for the surgeon who operated on me and for all the treatment I got from Chris's Hospital in Manchester, and uh, I was just so determined and. No, you shouldn't really say that, but, but I, I just was focused on what I could do with basketball and I ended up into the men's team that year and um, being in the Europeans. So it was, I went through some different patches myself when I was younger, but I think you've just got to be determined and focused. And if you, if you are determined and you're focused, you can achieve anything really. 
That's that's amazing. That uh, you know, we we've been friends a long time. I didn't even know that, and that's that's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's it's something I don't like to, to chat or, or, or to dwell on, really. But obviously, people are going to have when you say people are going to have bad times in life. That that was it for me. Uh, but you've just got to move on. And and finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that in my toolbox, Al. Um, and finally, Al, <laughs> what advice you still coach about? You love the game of basketball. You love them, and we we yeah. keep in touch. What advice would you give to any young person who may not have had the best journey in another sport? Is thinking about doing basketball? What would you say to that person? I would say get yourself along to your local basketball club, especially if you're a risk with get down to Lee Wilson. He's one of the best coaches I know. At the same time, do your own thing. Play basketball. You don't have to have a hoop outside your house. I learned how to play on that wall. Um, just doing my right hand, my left handed layups off the back wall, get footwork right. And then give myself a little routine every day. 15 minute routine where I used to do all my... Uh, like I say, where I practice my foot pivoting. Then I go outside, I'd work on my lap. Because as a big guy, you know, lateral, I don't have the greatest quickness. I was never the greatest athlete. I do my little bit of skipping for five or 10 minutes. I, I do my little lateral movement drills where I got my hands in the air and I'm, I'm, I'm making a square, my right foot, my left foot. And then I do some slide drills, a little bit of fitness. And then I go for a run. I go for a run every day. Um, from from the age of about 16 onwards, I'd run every day. It might just be a mile. Some days I'd run three miles, two miles, four miles. When I say run, I, I, it looked like a jog for me because I was really cool. That's what you got to do. And you just got to, doesn't matter who you are, what age, or what you determine, what level to get to. You've got to love the sport and you just got to be determined to put that in. and the work ethic. That's the key, I think, your work ethic. You just got to. And, and get yourself a little book. I used to write a book every day, what I'd done. If it was just a jog, some stretching, a, uh, a little weights, uh, a shot five minutes against the wall, practicing my footwork, I'd write down every day so I could look back and see how much improvement I've made and also what I'd done for that day. That's fantastic advice for the young people. You, you are an inspiration to anybody who wants to play basketball. And I, I'm honoured that we, we've kept our friendship for so long. Um, I just want to say, stay on the line, but I just want to say on behalf of Aberystwyth Basketball, everything you've done for the club, you've done the camps, and we look forward to seeing you hopefully next year when we celebrate our 30 years of Aberystwyth Basketball. Alan Bannister, thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Coach, Coach Coulson. I'm getting back down to basketball again. It's, it, you've got a fantastic set up there. And uh, you have everything you've achieved down there, coach. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Alan. Speak to you soon. Yeah, pleasure being here. Thank you. Bye bye.